notion in your life? Never in my life. Oh my God, so this is exciting, right? Yes, very. So you should be excited, not nervous. I'm kind of scared because I want this so badly. Really? Yeah. You want to move to Florida? Not just that, I want to do this. Thank you so much for clicking this video. I am Publius. And in this video, I will be breaking down why NSYNC's JC Chavez solo career did not pop off as his former bandmate Justin Timberlake did. Let's get into it. When NSYNC burst through stateside radio airwaves with their 1998 self titled debut album, fans were quick to stake claims on their favorite member. Some were drawn to Chris Kirkpatrick's school demeanor or Lance Bassett's bar next door charm. Joy Fatone had the goofiest personality and Justin Timberlake had almost everyone swooning with his teen model looks despite some questionable style choices, like that ramen noodle year style. But looking back on the 80s of the boy band, it was JC Chases who was undoubtedly the underrated superstar out of the bunch. From the beginning of NSYNC's career, Justin was branded as the face of the group, despite E and JC sharing the role of co-lead vocalists. Justin may have been the most conventionally attractive, and in being the youngest member along with dating pop princess Britney Spears, definitely added to his appeal. A large chunk of the spotlight was on him throughout the band's short-lived career, that unfairly cast a shadow over JC, who was arguably the pillar that kept their music floating high on the charts thanks to his pristine vocals. Justin's signature facetta was mostly heard on hooks that made songs like I Want You Back and Pop so catchy. But JC's soulful crones carried the weight of the majority of the band's singles. To put it simply, he had the range. Bring some understanding here to JC's vocal dexterity was prominent ever since NSYNC's early singles like Here We Go and Tearing Up My Heart and it only grew stronger during his time in the group. The singer's voice beautifully webbed and flowed through the R&B thing the I Just Wanna Be With You from their debut album, while the club mix of For The Girl Who Has Everything found him taking control of both verses without a need for Justin's solo presence. He also tapped into his inner Judice with the unforgettable line, Are you feeling my Tims, my baggy jeans, my thug apparel? On the song, Bring It All To Me, his 1999 collaboration with girl group Blake that earned him a hit outside of NSYNC years before Justin. Once the recording of their sophomore album 2000's No Strings Attached was underway, JC graduated to co-writing and co-producing a handful of the songs. He fused other worldly dance synths and hip hop drums on Space Cowboy Yippee Ya Ye, featuring the late Left Eye, and managed to make naughty cyber sex seem divine on Digital Get Down, unlike Justin, who still sounded prepubescent. This I Promise You, which was the third single of their second album, proved that JC's strength lied with love struck ballads that showcased his sonic magnitude. By year 2001, when the band's third and final album titled Celebrity was released, he shared credits with Justin. The album Celebrity was designed for Justin to shine, as he was on the brink of solo stardom, but JC still won up him by utilizing urban-inspired beats that felt more authentic. His bandmate teamed up with big names like Wade Robson and the Neptunes for its singles like Pop, Girlfriend, and Gone, while JC opted for pushing the envelope with blippy PlayStation sound effects on deeper cuts like The Game Is Over, laced its affectionate vocals on the sticky sweet Two of Us, got adventurous on the funky fight up against the wall inspired by Two Step UK Garage, and channeled its inner Brian McKnight with his emotional belts on Selfish, which was produced by Midnight. Following the success of Celebrity, which debuted at number one on the Billboard's 200 chart and was certified five times platinum by the RIAA, NSYNC announced a temporary hiatus that later became permanent. Both Justin and JC took advantage of this time heading to the studio to work on their solo projects, 2002's Justified and 2004's Schizophrenic, 
respectively. Part of the reason JC's solo effort was eclipsed by Justin's massive success was simply because his bandmate was quicker to release his first album, which was backed by the Neptunes, Timberland, and Scott Starch. Justin's debut single Like I Love You peaked at number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100, while top 5 follow-ups Crimea River and Rock Your Body officially catapulted Justin to international superstardom as a solo artist. Unfortunately, JC couldn't keep up, but that didn't mean his own solo music wasn't noteworthy. Justin wanted to express a more mature R&B sound on his album, but JC took the literal meaning of his album title and created an overwhelming mashup of genres including reggae pop, rock, electronica, soul, disco, funk, and new wave. That was a little less streamlined than his NSYNC counterpart. JC's love for pure R&B carried on throughout his album, where he called upon Dallas Austin, who's worked with the likes of TLC, Pink, and Madonna for his top 40 hit, Blowing Me Up, with her love in parentheses, which was previously featured on the Drumline movie soundtrack in 2002. The singer's random trend of utilizing parentheses continued with Schizophrenic's lead single, Some Girls, Dance with Women in parentheses. The song had all the potential to become a surefire hit, from JC's come hit of vocals to the snake charmer hypnosis of the production, but it barely cracked the charts, peaking at number 88 on the Hot 100. The song's defeat could also be attributed to the content itself, as women dancing with each other isn't a mind blowing concept. While Justin already had a handful of smash singles tucked under his belt, JC was lagging behind. What made matters worse is that Justin's infamous Super Bowl moment with Janet Jackson in February 2004 caused a negative ripple effect. JC was meant to perform Blowing Me Up during the Pro Bowl in Hawaii a week following the halftime show, but his appearance was later nixed due to the song's inappropriate content. The NFL understandably wanted to be on the FCC's good side, but lyrics like She was leaning on me, getting me arny, maybe we'll get naughty, do not really compare to exposing a famous singer's breast on national television. Schizophrenic is JC's only solo album to date and later became a cult favorite for diehard fans as Justin continued to take over the pop world with his follow-up albums Future Sex Love Sounds, The 2020 Experience Parts 1 and 2 and The Man of the Woods. JC decided to parlay his boy band knowledge into writing and producing for other artists like David Archuleta, Sugar Babes, Mick Fly, Basement Jacks, and even his one-time pop rivals, the Backstreet Boys. After parting ways with Jive Records, which stalled the release of any possible follow-up album, JC kept his face in the spotlight as one of the judges on MTV's America's Best Dance Crew from 2008 to 2012. He also appeared in films like Killer Movie, Red Sky, and the musical comedy opening night alongside Toe for Grace. I want to make sure that once we get out there, we're all in sync. Get it? I get it every time, JC. Look, it's five minutes to show. Why do we always... JC had all the essentials for becoming a successful pop star, just like Justin. But poor marketing, overtly sexual lyrics, a debut album that tried to accomplish too much, and overall bad timing didn't take him down that path. But if he ever decides to return to the music industry with a proper sophomore album release, he still has a cult-like following that believes he deserves is just due. So that's it for this video. Comment down below your favorite NSYNC songs and also your favorite songs from JC's solo album. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Peace out.